Thanks for the warm introduction and yeah, hi Nolan, if you're there. So would be really glad to chat with you afterwards. Um, so um, I'm Johnny and I'm working with Fraunhofer on, on this technology which enables to walk freely around uh, and within virtual worlds. And obviously the title of this uh, topic uh, I hope is uh, as intriguing for you as it is for us. So that's our long-term vision. And we're getting there. I'm going to bring in some three use cases, uh, one of which is gaming and entertainment. The other two are slightly uh, less sexy, let's say. So the one is industrial planning, and the other one is marketing and sales. However, they help us as a startup to reach our long-term vision. So. Needless to say to you guys, obviously uh, VR is the new hot shit. Uh, it's a very big market, 30 billion uh, within the next five years. Um, and everybody's talking about it and we are also hacking around it. Um, we organized a hackathon ourselves. We called it the uh, hackathon, um, the Holodeck hackathon mid uh, July in, in our Holodeck, which is located in Nuremberg. Um, however, we believe that as with many emerging technologies, there are some issues around new technologies as they emerge. Uh, with virtual reality, I mean, it's been around for some years, but in particular, we, we want to solve three issues, which we believe is key in order to uh, make VR become mainstream, which uh, is our goal. So uh, having a look at these different waves of consumer tech actually the time really decreased from wherever there was a lighthouse project, a lighthouse project, like with BlackBerry, until there was the mainstream adoption, let's say, the, the introduction of iPhone. So these, these times really decreased from perhaps 18, year, 18 years to 8 years to 3 years, 3 or 4 years. So many people are hoping that this will be the case with VR and AR. However, um, having a look at this platform, we see that there are already billions of people on these platforms. We believe that this trajectory or this rule will not, uh, definitely not apply to, to AR and VR, as we think that in several years there might be some few hundred million people on, on these platforms. However, we think that if you razor sharply define the use cases where really these technologies add value, then there will be adoption within these niches. So and the three issues we want to solve in particular is a lonely experience. So this picture, uh, many of you might be aware of, is uh, this year where Mark Zuckerberg went on stage in the Mobile World Congress. And many of these people were in their VR. However, they were uh, isolated. And we, we as human beings, we're very social beings. We we want to interact, so uh, this social aspect is definitely a key issue we see. Mm, whilst there are many mobile setups out there, we believe that uh, it's still very bound to these, uh, um, these desktop PCs, which basically provide the power, the computing power. So uh, in order to be more intuitive and more human, we think that it needs to be basically go with the human being wherever the human being will go, wherever the user wants to be. And the biggest, perhaps, the motion sickness. So um, wherever there is a disconnect between what you see and what you hear, like your, your visual and audio uh, signals, for example, you're doing a roller coaster in an experience, but your stomach tells you, hey, actually, I'm just sitting here comfortable in this chair. This disconnect uh, brings discomfort and um, there are attempts to solve these issues. We believe that they are they're very good attempts. Um, however, we think that each of these attempts, they tackle one of these three issues, or perhaps two of these issues, but not all of these three mentioned issues at the same time. So for example, you have VR cinemas, like in Amsterdam, or these pop-up cinemas also around Europe, where you basically experience a 360 video, perhaps, and you have this 360 chair, so you're still lonely in your experience, uh, you're still bound to the chair, um, and um, you can't really move around. So 
Social VR platforms like NextVR, they definitely solve the social aspect. However, you're still bound. Um, and what we believe comes closest to our vision, the Holodeck is the HTC Vive system. However, you're still in a single player uh, environment and you're bound to, to the cable. So this is our, our suggestion for a Holodeck type environment. This was taken mid last year, so it's a bit outdated. However, it gives a pretty good overview. Eine leere Halle, Koordinaten auf dem Boden, Sensoren an den Wänden und rings um mich herum grauer Beton. Kaum zu glauben, dass ich mich hier gleich wie in der Toskana fühlen soll, dazu brauche ich diese Brille hier. Ich bin gespannt, wie real das Ganze ist. Kaum habe ich die Brille auf, bin ich in der virtuellen Welt. Vor mir ein Haus mit Garten. Langsam taste ich mich voran. Hallo? Wie geht's euch? Gewöhnungsbedürftig, aber auch faszinierend. Über einen kleinen Sensor erfassen zwölf Antennen in der Halle meine genaue Position. Auf einem Smartphone, das auf die Brille gesteckt wird, sehe ich die virtuelle Welt. Schaue ich nach rechts, dreht sich auch das Bild nach rechts, lege ich mich hin, sehe ich über mir den Himmel. So, what makes up a, a Holodeck in our view? Um, Actually, you need mind-blowing experiences. So from virtual traveling to gaming to laser tech 2.0. Um, this picture here actually shows a uh, group composition um, where the position of the users define like the music produced. So this was also in our hackathon. So besides this, and we're gonna deep dive into the applications or use cases, we believe that a large number of users is key. So in our case, we can do cover up to 100 users and uh, large areas. So um, whoever has large areas actually is a potential first user or buyer of this technology, like a trade fair as we are here in, in, the, in the Deutsche Messe AG. Um, and right now our prototype covers the area 30 by 50. However, the technology has the capacity to cover up to four soccer fields uh, of, of an area. So, and what you might ask yourself, what is behind, uh, behind the scenes? So behind the scenes, there's a tracking technology which is based on radio frequency. Um, as of now, and uh, we're currently working on a sense of fusion with optical tracking in order to achieve the optimal of both tracking devices. On top of that, we have um, some software algorithms to actually recalibrate the virtual world as you are within the world in order to avoid recali or the manual recalibration. And this would actually de-immerse the users. Mm. Besides this, we are taking head-mounted displays and other technologies like a gesture control, which we buy from outside. So we are agnostic to the head-mounted displays, unlike Model VR, which I believe has its own uh, headsets. We, we work with mobile setups like uh, the Gear VR or with um, backpack setups, uh, HTC Vive and, and a backpack gaming laptop, as well as streaming. Um, We obviously need great content, so this is a, this is a little uh, Lego uh, sheep, which was uh, designed within the hackathon, and some operational issues in order to provide throughput for, for the holodeck, uh, in order to be hygienic. So on the long run, we believe that uh, we, we need a place to distribute the apps. So far, we have 10 apps for the holodeck, to all the places where the holodecks are installed. So far, we have one installed in Nuremberg, and currently we are um, working on the next three installations in leisure parks. So this is obviously an interesting point where, where we aim to have a similar ecosystem built up like the iTunes store, where, where we share revenues with the content producers. So also the 10 apps which were developed during our hackathon Uh, the IP stays with the hackers and with the designers. And 
we are now closing uh, revenue share agreements in order to publish and distribute uh, the experiences in games. So let's have a quick look at how the technology, the underlying technology works in uh, adjunct use cases. This is augmented sports and another Fraunhofer spin-off. So we are also a Fraunhofer spin-off actually is about to deploy this technology within the North American leagues, uh, sports leagues for the data hungry fans. In this way, Red Fur enables media companies to produce a new form of sports coverage. For instance, information on ball and player speeds or a back force performance can be directly presented in the form of superimposed graphics or captions. Viewers benefit from player statistics such as distance covered, passes played, time of possession or fitness levels. So currently they are um, demoing the, the technology in, in, in a prudential ice hockey stadium in, in Newark and um, if they succeed, there are two other suppliers, one or two other suppliers, this will be rolled out throughout uh, multi-purpose entertainment halls in North America, US and Canada. And um, the deal here is actually that they are covering the augmented sports part, uh, application use case of the technology, and uh, we are covering the everything else uh, within AR and VR. So basically, this multi-purpose halls, whenever there's not a hockey game, they do concerts, events, uh, or other things, and they could serve as a holodeck gaming operation site. So the, the feature itself to move around freely within virtual worlds is obviously a very hot uh, killer feature uh, described by the experts, so to say. And there are several ways how one con can do that. Inside out tracking, as, as Samsung is working on, or outside in, as we are working on. And comparing these two technologies, we would place ourselves more as an industry grade. And this inside out as a consumer grade. So both uh, have definitely their application cases. So these are the use cases we can think of. So I'm, I'm happy to get more inspiration from you guys. Um, so the biggest use case for sure is entertainment and gaming and, and also the most adoptive uh, based on our talks with, with different users and, and players. After that, um, coming from Fraunhofer, we have close ties, obviously, to the industrial world. Um, so here we're talking about planning um, cities or planning factories, uh, greenfield or brownfield. Um, everybody who has 3D data, like uh, CATS data, for example, is a potential user of a, uh, of a holodeck. And here we're talking with trade fairs, because trade fairs, they have uh, large halls, they have a lot of users and they have changing content, changing uh, trade fairs. So they are a potential partner or user of a holodeck. And besides this, obviously, there are many more. Um, and we're going to touch upon these three. And if you have any questions, or feel free to jump in. That's, that's why we're here. Um, so these are some numbers. These are some numbers on, on the gaming, entertainment, and the enterprise market. So the market is for sure bigger in the entertainment part. However, it's more competition. I don't know what's that, but anyway, uh, the market uh, in, in the enterprise is slightly smaller, we, we believe. Thanks. And... Um, we're going to deep dive into this. So these are our, our first um, clients for these two markets. And this is perhaps a little recap of where we're coming from. So the technology has been developed over years. Um, the hardware part of it. Um, this year we started really with the content. Um, as we know, content is king and a platform without the content doesn't really make any sense. We did the hackathon. We got 10 apps, 
then not, let's say, commercial grade apps, but for sure we got a Holopong, similar to what Modal VR um, presents, and uh, Holopack, which we're gonna see a little trailer afterwards, a tribute to Ping Pong and Pac-Man. And right now we are, we've defined the three um, focus use cases of the Holodeck, and we are scaling with partners on the sales aspect. And um, we know that this is a fast changing environment, so we already planned in to reinvent ourselves continuously. So we are not out there on our own. So we are covering, we are covering two, two aspects. So basically this location-based um, use cases and the distribution. And here, this is basically the gaming aspect, the entertainment and the enterprise. And this is small case uh, space applications in large space. So there are many players out there. We have, we believe we found a niche which is a uh, large space, not ultra uh, large space as model VR, but large space up to four soccer fields large where many users can interact with one another and where we can offer both B2C and B2B use cases. So having a look at the underlying technologies, um, you'll see that optical tracking has advantages and uh, infrared has also some, uh, some um, radio frequency has also some advantages. Unfortunately, optical tracking um, doesn't scale with, or the price scales uh, proportionally with the area. So basically it's getting very costly whenever you want to cover a large space. What we have, we have a combination um, for smaller areas like 10 to 10 to 20 to 20 from optical and radio frequency. And then thereafter, we have, uh, we're scaling below this price line with the retro system. And now we can deep dive into the different use cases. So let's have a look at what we're doing in with a trade fair in Munich, for example. So here we see that the trade fair Munich has already adopted some technologies, starting obviously with the low hanging fruits with 360 videos. Um, this year actually they saw many exhibitors using stationary apps um, where you can perhaps configure a machine. Um, they're a little bit afraid that they will sell less square meters um, as this is the, the business to sell square meters for exhibitors. And right now we're looking at um, the next generation, so to say, the real-time applications, which is one actually to navigate through the trade fair as the trade fair um, actually is happening. The other one is actually to show virtu uh, in virtual environments real products. We're doing this uh, for the first time with ISPO next year in, in February with uh, Willy Buchner, which is a sporting goods. Um, so they are in the um, winter sports industry. So, and they have the issue that to transfer the feeling and the excitement of winter sports in a, let's say, rather boring trade fair is quite a challenge for them. So fortunately, Willy Buchner is an entrepreneur himself and he did very great works with filming. And he's also keen enough to try out the holodeck. So we are gonna do a mini holodeck of let's say 10 by 10 meters where users can walk uh, within the Alps. They can get the feeling of how it is and then actually they drive through the history of Willy Buchner. So this is, this is one thing we're doing. Um, we're also looking with the Messe Munich to, to the next generation where we actually uh, let users experience virtual products in virtual environments like eSports. And this is uh, interesting wherever there is um, um, not a utilization of the uh, halls. For example, in August and um, July, August and December, usually it's pretty flat, it's pretty uh, not busy around in these trade fairs. So in the case of Willy Bogner, actually we teamed up with the Messe München and um, with Willy Bogner. Willy Bogner contributed the content Messe Munich, the area, and we, the technology. So, um, and we are thinking that this could be a, 
an example of how trade fairs all around the world actually can move forward and proactively embracing these technologies in order to, and not to fear these technologies as some of them are actually doing. So this is a little bit on of an overview of how this will look like. So this is the Willy Bogner stand exhibition in the ISPO. So and we're gonna have a little holodeck here where the users first get to experience a walk within two um, mountain hills. And um, then they are entering an elevator where the history of Willy Bogner actually passes by. Willy Bogner has ve very great material of, of um, um, film and, and uh, image material. And thereafter, once they reach the top, they will uh, immerse themselves into a 360 video uh, cruising downhill with the latest Willy Bogner gear, of course. <laughs> So, um, yeah, check it out if, if, if you're interested in this. Um, this is a little trailer or pr post view of uh, how our hackathon looked like. And we had 70, 70 hackers, designers, even one doctor. And um, we opened up our system, we did a Unity plugin, so we distributed this Unity plugin. We also distributed these tags so that user uh, hackers could play around with it. What was the outcome? The outcome were 10 different apps. Nine of them were rather going to the gaming side of, of things. And uh, we had participants also from corporates like Playmobil or Lego. And um, the winner was actually Holopack from Treff.id and uh, Thorsten also then came up with Holopong. Um, so he's quite uh, active uh, in, in within our system and um, right now we are repeating or we're following up this, this momentum we gained uh, having a Hololab we call it, like a mini hackathon <laughs> every last Friday <laughs> of each month. So we just had it last Friday and December we're skipping, but the next ones are coming up in January and February. So this is uh, happening in Nuremberg. So let's have a quick view in how this is looking like for uh, the industrial use cases. So in this case, we're teaming up with Autodesk as Autodesk, all of Autodesk users are potential users of um, um, Holodeck. Uh, immersing themselves into their models um, with the same ratio, with the same scale. And we're starting uh, obviously with, like, let's say, the top clients of Autodesk. This is a train in the Berlin, in the Berlin Central Station. And here we're using the backpack solution as they're really after high resolution experiences. And in this case, we're also going to team up either within the Fraunhofer, so we're going to have the experience within the Fraunhofer Institute or the within the trade fair. And I guess perhaps the, the use case you guys are most excited uh, around is the gaming use case. So here we see definitely the biggest market. One thing is the hardware aspect and the integration into the theme parks or into laser tech uh, operations. The other aspect is the distribution and publishing of the games. So in total we estimate like four billion and obviously, yeah, you can um, argue about uh, how the split down will be. In any case, I think it's pretty early in the game to, to, to have an educated guess here. So we, we are having here a little comparison with our, um, with our competitors, which is HTC Vive in, in, in a sense, uh, VRCade, which is located in the east coast of, of US. Um, the Void, uh, many of you uh, might be fa familiar with, and Zero Latency, a company out of uh, Melbourne now um, also expanding into Asia. So all of them uh, have one thing in common, they are based on optical tracking, which is great because of their high accuracy. So uh, the, the HTC Vive accuracy for bigger u uh, areas and for more users. Um, however, we think there's still, um, let's say, a USP there which is our deeper tech uh, understanding. So we're covering the optical part as well as the, um, the um, radio frequency part. Um, 
And we have, we are definitely not aiming for, let's say, the shooter games here. So our first customer or biggest customer will be a leisure park operator. So they want to have a family friendly game and the whole family is excited uh, about. And uh, the, more user, the more number of users definitely brings us better economics or better economics to our customers, like the higher throughput, depending on how long the experience will be. In any case, uh, it will be also less expensive as other systems. As these systems, remember, they, uh, whenever you want to scale them in terms of area, you need to buy more cameras and it's getting very expensive. So this is coming from our investor presentation, but we, here we're basically telling why we're so great. So a lot of money was spent from Fraunhofer into this uh, red fear and many um, patents emerged out of that, of which Jogmo is using uh, the technology for augmented sports and we're using it for um, virtual reality. So the business model of operating, let's say, amusement parks is pretty proven, amusement parks or laser tech. And um, we, have, we have close, uh, very good uh, cooperation deals uh, on the one side with, um, with suppliers of leisure parks and on the other side with potential operators within the North American market. And then there are also some other resources we are trying to combine right now, like the single system uh, coming from the Fraunhofer Institute in order to enhance also the entire experience there. So this is one slide where I, I thought, okay, I, I, I don't want to have it as a monologue here, where I'm actually throwing the ball to you guys and I'm inviting you to think about, to, to do a little brainstorm here. So this is the... This is the use case of the leisure parks where we want to have 20 to 40 users in, in the experience and we obviously don't want them to collide with one another so they see each other as avatars. However, if you're running towards one another, it doesn't even matter if you see the other <laughs> person as an as a avatar. So basically jump and run games are, are not the, the, the first thing here. So we're thinking more like uh, playing around with limited viewing conditions like fog or perhaps, um, perhaps with uh, darkness and, and uh, limited light. So it should be intuitive. So we do not have in the leisure park operations, we do not have time to basically uh, tell the user how this game works. It has to be, so to say, idiot proof. And um, the themes we, we're trying to emph emphasize here is not speed, but rather skillfulness and agility, perhaps. So think about it as, for example, this elephant in the porcelain house, where it's not about who is the fastest, but who, who is perhaps the cleverest person. And we're also thinking about actually stealing some group dynamic things from games, group games, for example. Um, Think about Völkerball, perhaps, something like this, and group tasks like, for example, Bomberman. So, and here we, we have also several, like, say, modes. We have one um, day, day game where, where, where we offer this to the whole family. And then these uh, leisure park operators, they have also operations at night, mostly around Halloween, which is the seasonal peak of the leisure park operators, where they actually offer, like, say, horror um, environments and we would love to play around with different scales so immerse yourself in different uh, worlds you you're not able to do in reality like be a gigantic uh, um, person or pretty tiny and so yeah feel free to actually either write me or speak to me or actually give any idea you have right now which is popping into your mind as we are um, thinking about this game right now. And this is the Holo Pack. So far, perhaps the coolest game we have to offer as of now. pulled into the arcade game. So this 
a little bit of also the making of the team, which by the way was um, they didn't know each other at all. So that was also a pretty cool Hallo, aspect. User. Bitte entschuldigen Sie die Unannehmlichkeiten. Doch einen Kurzschluss in der Drille kam es zu einer Kollision der Welten. Schauen Sie nach oben. Sie haben nur eine begrenzte Zeit, um in Ihre Welt zurückzukehren. Eines müssen Sie wissen. Die Cubes vor Ihnen verschaffen Ihnen mehr Zeit. Aber Vorsicht! Es läuft gerade auch ein Antivirus-Programm über das System und Sie sind der Eindringling. User, vermeiden Sie den Kontakt mit den Virus-Bots. Das kostet wertvolle Zeit. User, die Systeme laufen wieder auf Hochtouren. Wir holen sie jetzt raus. Perfekt. Wahnsinn. Krass. Also das muss ich sagen, Leute, war schon echt richtig cool. So basically, if, if, if you're not doing, uh, achieving it within the time, you're, you're caught in the virtual reality forever. And if you manage to to uh, get all the gold nuggets, uh, you're released to to the reality. So this is the team we are working currently with on on the topic. Stephen and Christian and Tobias, they are all coming from the Fraunhofer Institute, and uh, each of us has a different uh, field we're covering. And Janine has been working with the chief storyteller of um, Europa Park. And uh, Rene is working on the PR. And basically, we, are, we have also the open, openness. So we, we, we do this open innovation thing as we think everybody is learning here at a quite fa fast uh, pace. So we have a community. And uh, this community actually right now is meeting each other w once once a month. And um, yeah, you are all obviously invited to join the community. It's a little Facebook group we organized and physical real meetings uh, each fr last Friday of each month. And these are the next dates. Uh, actually, it's 27th of January and 24th of February next year. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad um, to be here and I'm I'm open for for any questions you guys might has, might have. Okay. Thank you Johnny. A round of applause for the <laughs> holodeck. Thank you. So who wants a holodeck right now? Uh, one person. We can sell it to her. So some questions to the holodeck project. Or else are you the, the gentleman um, ah, there's in the back? Okay, there we got no other microphone. I'm coming. Ah, ah what is it? Uh, what would technically be needed to set up a holodeck? So basically, we have different components within a holodeck system, and one component is the tracking, tracking system, which is composed of the hardware. Uh, it's really the sen sensory part, which you need to install on, let's say, three to four meters height, as well as a little server, um, which does the sensor fusion. Um, in case you, you have this combination of optical and um, red field system, we need to do the sensor fusion in real time. And then you need, you need head-mounted displays, so you need the, the goggles, depending on how, how many users you, you want to immerse, as well as, as the game. So currently, there's not a distribution store yet, as we have a rather limited number of games. We're working on that. And um, 
the most likely way to experience um, Holodeck is either to visit the, the prototype in Nuremberg or to wait for, for the next uh, Halloween season in uh, Europa Park. Any other questions? All right.